This is an HP News Network special report. Okay, YouTubers and anti-nuke activists, welcome to another HP News Network special report. And this one I have to give credit to Shazam for the, some of this documentation here. What I want to talk about as briefly as possible is this another dog and pony show that's taking place. And I'm not referring to the Unit 4 attempt to fool people into thinking the worst of the worst hasn't happened. They're pretending they're offloading fuel there. We know they're not. The evidence in these documents proves that. But that's only one part of the propaganda mission. The part two has to take place back here in the States as the Nuclear Regulatory Commission tours around the country with some of its star members in an attempt to convince the American public that nothing happened to spent fuel pools in Fukushima. I'll direct your attention to this first particular Freedom of Information Act document, which is from September 18th, 2013. It's quite recent. This is in regards to the public meeting at Rockville, Maryland. Like I said, they're touring around the country in certain spots. You can listen to the NRC tell you their version of what happened, and you might get lucky and have a chance to ask a question at some of these public meetings. But will you get a, a, a forthright and honest response from the NRC? And I'm going to prove to you here today that you will not. And so let's go to the first screen capture. I'm going to try and give you some of these covers to these documents so you can see what they look like, so on and so forth. Okay, this first particular screen capture I have, I just want to show you who's present at this meeting, this public meeting here in the United States of America, where they're going around talking about what we've learned, lessons learned from Fukushima. I should have thrown that in on that cover page. If you look at it, it says title, Japan Lessons Learned Project Directorate Public Meeting. So they're talking about what they've learned, if anything, from Fukushima. Present in this meeting, Brian Sharon, Director, Office of Nuclear Regulatory Research. Jennifer Yule, Deputy Director for Reactor Safety Programs, NRR. Hossein Esmaili, Senior Reactor Systems Engineer. Stephen Jones, Senior Reactor Systems Engineer, DSS. Jose Perez, Senior Technical Advisor for Civil Engineering. I want you to listen to what Jennifer Yule says in her opening statement. Mrs. Yule, quote, Thanks, Lance. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. We're looking forward to answering any questions you may have at the end of our presentation and certainly interested in hearing your comments. Just to give a bit of background, the agency has done numerous studies on spent fuel pool safety since really the 1980s. Now, post Fukushima, there was enhanced public concern about spent fuel pool safety, and the agency took a number of actions to address those concerns. Now, the Fukushima events did not result in any loss of inventory or cause any kind of heat up in any of the spent fuel pools affected. Nevertheless, we still wanted to study this to determine if any regulatory action was warranted." End quote. In fact, let me throw those quotes up one more time and let me just give you that little section that you guys who have been following uh, my efforts and my work and my endeavors, you will have read Fear and Loathing on Fukushima Unit 4, you've read Something Wicked This Way Comes, you're intimately familiar with the NRC FOIA documents that paint a completely different story, okay? Quote, Jennifer Yule now, of the NRC, quote, Now the Fukushima events did not result in any loss of inventory or cause any kind of heat up in any of the spent fuel pools affected, end quote. Now I could draw from plenty of thermal pictures available now online. If you search around, you can look at Unit 4 and Unit 3 and see the thermal signature. In Unit 3, there's really not a spent fuel pool left, but in Unit 4, you can see that heated signature. You can also see heated signature from that actual reactor. So there's question now, was that reactor maybe operational? And they're not telling us the, the full truth about what was really going on in the Fukushima complex. Okay, And I'm writing a book on this right now. I hope to shed some light on that. But back to this dog and pony show right here in the United States, where as you can tell, folks, the story they're telling us is the exact opposite of what they already said in these documents. Okay, you must understand that. NRC in these FOIA documents said pretty much the worst of the worst happened there. You can read it. You can read all about it. Rubble, pile of rubble on the floor, melt on the floor, spent fuel pool number four, no walls, lost total loss of inventory. And then Jennifer Yule comes out and will tell you the exact opposite as she tours around the country with Brian Sharon sitting right there. And he won't say anything. You didn't want to raise your hand or something maybe, sir, and, 
and, and correct uh, Mrs. Yule, who is giving a bit of uh, inaccurate information there. She's starting to remind me of TEPCO, okay? Highly inaccurate. The screen capture you're looking at now is taken from online, and this is one that's very popular. You can just look and see the damage at Unit 3 and Unit 4. Did you think there might have been a heat up there? Do you think maybe the pool lost some inventory? Maybe there's a Zerk fire? I'm going to show you some more evidence of this. I'm not going to beat a dead horse here, but this is critical that I show you the disparity between the two descriptions, the two accounts of what happened at Fukushima. Okay, this next particular screen capture we're looking at, again, I just want to show that Jennifer Yule knows more than what she's telling. Okay, to what degree, I can't exactly tell you, but I can show you and shed some light now that she's well aware, if you look at this email, it says subject, and this is from the 21st of Monday, 2011, and it says subject, RE, Fuku 4, Fuel Pool, Melkor Results. Okay, what does that mean? Fukushima 4 for Unit 4 Fuel Pool Melkor Melt Core Results. Again, in these documents, there's a profuse amount of information that shows that Unit 4 lost all of its water. There's a Zerk fire, and, and likely, chances are, the majority of that fuel has already burned up. There's nothing to unload. It's a complete fabrication. It's a complete hoax, and they're attempting to pull the wool over our eyes right now. She says in this letter, Randy, no one is questioning NRC's analysis. We have a KAPL representative here at the Op Center, and he indicated that KAPL had done some calculations using Melkor for the Admiral, and they wanted to ask NRC's help in reviewing them. I won't read the whole email. You can go through it yourself, but that's the important part right there where they're discussing this Melkor for unit number four, spent fuel pool number four. So Miss Yule is well aware that there is a heat up because here they're kicking back and forth is that pile of melted superheated fuel is it going to ablate is it going to burn through the concrete is it going to burn through the rebar and and go down like the china syndrome that's what they're asking here clearly you can see jennifer yule is the sender of this email and this next email from jennifer yule march 21 monday march 21 2011 subject same thing re fuku for fuel pool melkor results and she goes on to say, the question Naval Reactors is asking is whether the Unit 4 spent fuel pool will reach concrete ablation temperatures. Okay, so what is in question? Spent fuel pool number four. What are they wondering? Hey, is that fire and the loss of inventory in that superheated corium blob of melted fuel rods that have melted down this blob, are they going to burn through the concrete? Are they going to burn through the rebar? Gee, we're really worried. Nowadays, she's turned around the country, and she's saying something completely different. So somewhere there's a massive schism of difference between these two stories. One of these stories cannot be true. Okay, if two men on the street corner say they're Jesus, at least one of them must be wrong. And that's basically the situation we're at right now. Okay, this next screen cap and a couple I'm going to show you is just to, again, show you what these guys at the NRC are well aware of. Now, I will link to a document where Jennifer Yule is uh, brushing shoulders with the likes of Marty Virgilio, Dan Dorman, Brian Sharon, Chuck Casto, all these big players, all these big NRC players that are well aware of the situation early on at Fukushima, and they know exactly what happened. Like I say, I, Chuck Casto has never changed his tune. In any document I've seen him, and he keeps a steady course and sticks with what he saw and what he knows to be the truth. So some of them are aware of the truth, and I imagine if you could interview Chuck Casto, he probably wouldn't change his tune today. I mean, he would have changed already by now. So the fact she's in this other particular transcription bumping shoulders, although I don't have her talking about Unit 4 losing water or being superheated, she's bumping shoulders with these people that know all that information. I cannot for the life of me see how she does not know that this has happened Unit 4. And let me say this, in the odd, strange, miraculous event, she really is that ignorant that she's working that close with these people, but somehow has such a lack of knowledge of what actually happened there. Should she be touring around the country describing Fukushima conditions to people? Should someone like that with such a complete lack of knowledge be cheering around? the And, and Brian Sharon's right there. Sir, why, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you stand up and say, well, that's not entirely true. Actually, it did lose inventory. And you can look at the thermal signatures that are available online if you just dig around and see the superheated spent fuel pool, right? It's really that simple, folks. If you look at this particular screen cap right here, April 5th, Phil Qualls. The damage is amazing. 
In my opinion, Mark's opinion means more. Unit 3 had to have had a spent fuel pool Zerk fire after the explosion. Note the condition of the steel girders around the pool. They must have fallen to the top of the pool before the fire, then melted and twisted. Glad this n did not happen near Decatur, Alabama. So there you go right there, folks, from the documents. Look at Unit 3. It wasn't until the pool had a Zerk fire that all that metal began to twist and and have that effect on top. It originally just fell down. The beams were straight. After the fire, it was all melted and twisted. We know there is a fire there. This is absolutely contradicts Jennifer Yule's statements from the NRC. Again, here's another screen capture some of you may be familiar with. This is one of my favorites from Margie Kotzalis to Joffrey Miller, March 15th, 2011. I'll read the bottom relevant section. I couldn't sleep again last night. Michelle was doing a shift in the Ops Center, Protective Measures Team, last night. She texted me, quote, U2 X Vessel, U4 Zerk Fire SFP, comma, catastrophe, end quote, and there's two sections outside of scope that are there redacted. Again, this stands in direct contradiction to Jennifer Yule's statement as she tours around the country saying there was no heat up and no loss of inventory, no loss of water in these pools, but we had a Zerk Fire. Okay, here's another screen capture just to bolster what I'm saying from Gary Holohan to Marty Virgilio. Marty Virgilio brushing shoulders with Jennifer Yule. I mean, these everybody knows everything, okay? And it would be preposterous for us to believe or even harbor the possibility that they, these guys, someone doesn't know? I mean, if that's the case, I'm looking for a job. I know it more than she does right now, and I need gainful employment, okay? Look what it says right here. Quote, I think this is right on target. In addition, for the long-term look, we likely will need to revisit the issue of non-seismically qualified spent fuel pools, of which I recall there are many. Now, he's referring to right here in the U.S. If you read the bottom email on this particular screen cap, they're talking about post-Fukushima, Obama's ordered a study, a review of the domestic fleet, and he wants to know about spent fuel pools because they already know how vulnerable we are. They want an official assessment because now they really, 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 really know it. In the up and coming of that assessment, the creation of that assessment, they're discussing it, bantering it back forth and what they're going to do and what they're going to talk about. Here's an admission right here. We have many, not one, not two, but many non-seismically qualified spent fuel pools right here in the States, right here in the States. You don't hear Jennifer Yule talking about that. You don't hear Brian Sharon talking about that at these public meetings. These meetings are a farce. Why are my tax dollars paying for these people to tour around the country and essentially lie and deceive to the American public? Question, why are we paying taxes for these people to tour around the country? You're supporting them. You work hard to pay your taxes so they get a paycheck so they can tour around the country and tell you everything's fine with spent fuel pool number four. We don't need to shut down nuclear power. Everything's fine. Meanwhile, the effects of this disaster are catastrophic. As not just in Japan, but here in the States. And in the next few years, we're really going to begin to feel the effect of this, folks, and it's going to be undeniable. So, again, here's another email that says, hey, I mean, it's not talking about spent fuel pool number four, but it's talking about over here of the situation. And you do not hear this kind of openness at these public meetings, period, period. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover for right now. I'm not demanding anybody's resignation. Jennifer Yule, Brian Sharon, it would be the right thing to do, the moral thing, the ethical thing, to tender your resignation immediately. Well, it's not my place to call for that, although the American public certainly can and maybe should. I'm going to also link to that one document where Jennifer Yule is back and forth with some of these bigwigs. Like I say, if you look at Marty Virgilio and what he knows in these documents, you can't tell me those two talk on a daily basis and don't share the same information, folks. They, these higher level players, as you will find in Plumegate, all pretty much know the same thing. It's just very few of them, like Casto, are willing to stick to the truth and tell the truth. Okay, that covers it for another HP News Network special report. This is your host, Patrick Penry. Over and out. This has been an HP News Network special report. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.